everyone, this is Mark Wong from PSB Academy Student Affairs and Industry Engagement and welcome to another episode of Career Cookies. Today we are privileged to have with us Mr. Dennis Tan, a leader in the personal development space as well as a well-respected life coach in the speaking circles. Dennis, welcome to our show. Hi Mark, thank you. Hi students, thank you. Thank you. It's our thank pleasure. You very much. Oh, Dennis, could you share with us a little bit about what you do and also some key lessons in leadership that will inspire everyone today? Sure. Hi everyone, my name is Dennis and uh, firstly I'd like to thank Mark and PS Academy for inviting me to this uh, career cookie uh, interview. I'm very grateful for this uh, opportunity. So I'm a co-founder of Epic Achiever, a company that we founded actually only this year, interestingly, during this COVID-19 period. We started this company a couple of months ago and uh, we are into training and consulting. And we have started our first uh, consulting project with uh, one of our customer, our client, which is in the area of TCM and Master David uh, Tan, which um, Mark, you have met himself. So we are actually helping business to, to grow, to brand, to scale and to expand um, you know, their business to the next level. So currently right now we are, we are looking at um, expanding this current uh, first client of ours, Master David, to Singapore. And within the first three months, just before the COVID happened, we have already scaled his business to a thousand percent return in terms of the area um, of uh, scalability, branding, and even his income. Um, so these are the things that we are doing. And also uh, we, we are doing training as well in the area of personal development and also business coaching. So during this period of time, we have in fact at least two contracts that has confirmed with us to do training. Unfortunately, it has to be put on hold and uh, it will only happen probably in a few months time after the COVID uh, pandemic uh, slow down a little bit. So currently right now, what we are doing is really sharpening our skills and our knowledge is to really read, practice and train a lot so that we are, yeah. you know, get ourselves prepared and ready. So that's what we are doing currently right now right, with our partner, Ivan. Right. <clears throat> so this is what I'm doing, uh, Epic Achiever. I'm pretty sure that uh, you have uh, many valuable uh, life lessons in leadership, um, you know, under your repertoire. So would you be able to share uh, some of those uh, key moments in your life where you will be able, where you were a, uh, an effective leader that will inspire everyone today? Sure. I think leadership mm. is something uh, very personal, personable and uh, mm. something where it, it belongs to, to every one of us differently. We have many different type of interpretation. Now to me, when I first heard that leadership is, is made and uh, is created, I kind of agree. But after I met my boss, um, Mr. Richard Tan from Success Resources, he actually told me this, that, that is, Richard is actually, uh, leaders are actually born. Mm -hmm. They are actually born because since young, they have been trained to dictate and get what they want as kids. And pretty much when I can relate to seeing my kids, you know, they are, they are natural leadership. They are natural leaders because they always get what they want. When they can't get what they want, they will cry, they will demand and stuff. So, so when I, when I hear that and that leaderships are born, I actually kind of understand that uh, leaders are uh, someone that have to first treat three things. I think first they must learn how to uh, listen. I think listening is very important as a leader. Many times leaders like to dictate and, and, and give orders and instructions, but they fail to listen uh, what is important and what, what are the feedback that people are giving to them. So I think as, as a leader, one must learn how to listen actively and also be willing to, to open for feedback because not every time anything that the leaders decide or say could be right. So be willing to listen and be open for feedback. And I think the second key for, for being a leader, right, is, is to be willing to follow. What do I mean by that? Before you lead, you must learn how to follow and take instructions from the superior or even from the manager. If you do not learn how to follow instructions and follow uh, authority, pretty much you're not allowing that um, to happen in your life. You're not allowing other followers to listen to you as well. So you must learn how to follow, take instructions and respect authority. 
um, even though I would say you may, may or may not like the person or the manager or the supervisor that's in charge of you, but you must respect the position because it is given by the authority, which is the CEO or even the bosses. And when the time comes for you to change your position or change a new environment, you will know what is it like to be a leader. And uh, the third thing that I learned as a leader, most important is, is you must learn how to execute. Execute and take action. Many times it's easy to talk about plans, it's easy to, to share, but when you fail to execute, when you fail to not lead by example, you're not walking the talk. So execution is the key, even though it could be wrong, but you take action rather than you don't take action. So execute is the, is the thing. So you must learn to listen and get feedback. You must learn to follow and you must learn to execute. These are the three main lessons that I will encourage everyone to, to do, to become an effective leader. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing, uh, Dennis. It, it certainly tugged at a few heartstrings in me as well. <laughs> now, there is no doubt that employers, uh, they're always looking for leadership skills in job candidates when making hiring decisions. Now, this is one trait, at least uh, myself as a career coach, that I often see in resumes of job seekers. It's usually um, listed under a list of skills. Oh, I'm an effective leader. I am equipped with leadership and management skills. Now, to me, if a candidate isn't able to substantiate what makes them an effective leader and what they wrote on their resume will basically end up looking like a soundbite with no real impact. Now, right. Dennis, in your opinion as a hirer, now that you have uh, your own uh, training consultancy, how would you expect a candidate to articulate that he or she has the skills of a good leader when they're at an interview with you beyond just a soundbite that they've written on their resume. What are some of the words you like to hear from the candidates you hire? What I, what I would look for when I'm interviewing any of my um, candidates mm. is I'm looking for humility and also um, attitude. And, and this will take time over a period of mm. three months minimum. That's why they talk about probation or if not, they extend the probation to six months. And only during this period of time, then you can see whether this person is able to leave what he or she wrote in the resume. At the end of the day, the resume is just very well decorated and everyone and anyone who wants to get into the job will make the best out of the resume. But don't get me wrong, resume is also a reflection of how they think, how they articulate, how they write. And absolutely no doubt they will do and decorate the resume to the best they can, which is the first image that any hire will look for. And when that happens, it will pass phase one. And when they come to face to face, now that, that that's a different ball game. Yeah. Face to face, you're looking for energy, you're looking for present, you're looking for for um, you know more of their body language. And again, this is what 30 minutes max or maybe second or third interview, which is not yeah. even two or three hours, which doesn't translate uh, into a further possibility of this candidate to stay in the organization. So I think for anybody who come into a room with the interviewer, I think first thing first is they have to be comfortable. They have to be willing to to be themselves. And you know, as time goes, having a degree, having a paper certification is important. But I think in this age of you know education, in this age of time, we are looking beyond just paper grades. And uh, we are also looking for somebody who can be um, you know well-driven, somebody who is also very techy. And again, it's very common now that people are even doing video interview or recorded video interview just to get past the phase one. So I think uh, importantly, what I look for is for people when they come in the room is to be comfortable and, and be themselves. Uh, it's okay. Yeah. It's okay that they are not perfect because we are not looking for perfect people. If they are perfect, then they may not be in the place where we want to hire them because they may think that they know a lot. And that comes from a space of ego and that will definitely destroy, you know, leadership uh, mentality. So, um, yeah, humility, positive attitude, and also natural, authentic self. I think that's what I'm looking for. Yes, that's, oh, that's amazing. Different. Thank you, Dennis. I'm pretty sure that there will be some students, especially graduating students, watching with us today who are probably thinking, hey, Mark, Dennis, that's great advice, but 
personally don't think I'm cut out to be a leader. I don't even have work experience. So what advice would you give to someone who's thinking that way? They can choose to continue to think that way, come into an organization and allow that organization to shape them, train them and, and cultivate them to become a better person or a better leader. Or they can, you know, do something about it. When I say do something about it is read a book, attend a personal development program, look for a coach, look for a mentor, or do something rather than just talking about it. You know, if, if somebody comes from a space of, I don't think I'm a leader, it, it comes from a space of, you, I think you know that, uh, uncertainty, fear, not good enough, so on and so forth. And this comes from many underlying reasons why this person is not willing to step out because of opinion, fear, approval, so on and so forth. So, you know, everybody is a leader, lucky or not. Everybody is a leader because we, we came into this world being the one and only one, unique and, and different. So to say that you're not a leader is actually de diminishing yourself, not allowing yourself to do something more than what you're capable of. So just to get out of your comfort zone, switch the mindset and do something different. Yeah, that's what I would like that's to, awesome. to, to uh, translate to the students who are watching this. And if I, add, uh, if I may add on as well, so PSB Academy also has a mentoring program that our nice. students uh, can sign up for if they like us to match them uh, with uh, uh, a mentor from our alumni database. All right, of course, these are, these are professionals who are working uh, in the corporate zone for a while already, and uh, there's always a, a time you need career advice. How do you thrive and succeed in the corporate world? We have the resources for you. We have the mentors for you. Now, Dennis, here in PSB Academy, we always believe that listening is one thing, okay? But it's also very important to apply what we just learned. Yes. Now, if there's one actionable strategy that you'd like our viewers to start applying right now to become more effective leaders, what would that be? Always give 100% in anything that you do. Regardless of which organization, which community you join, always give 100%. And always remember, when you join any company, don't ask yourself, what can I get out of this company? How much pay can I get? Uh, how many off days are there? Uh, are there bonuses? Yes, these are valid questions, mm -hmm. but it's not important. The important question you should ask yourself is, what can I bring to this company? What value can I create for this company? What can I do to make them a better company, a better organization? Ask not what you can take from the company, but what you can give, and your value will increase by 100%. Yeah, so give 100% in anything you do. Salary is important, but it's not the main satisfaction. Fulfillment, adding value, giving is the best satisfaction that you can give and you know that's beyond money and when you have that mindset and have that mentality and attitude success will chase you down and you'll be rich beyond your wildest dream yeah oh, that's understand. really amazing advice thank you so much dennis now dennis it's thank been you. a pleasure to have you with us uh we thank wish you. we had a little bit more time with you uh but this is uh definitely not the first and last time you're gonna meet we hope 100%. to be collaborating with you uh, once uh, the situation gets better. Now, to yes, everyone ma watching back home, uh, we hope you enjoyed today's episode and we hope that for those of you who are right now crafting your resumes, if you are ever going to list down leadership as one of your key traits, the tips that you learned today will help you substantiate your point and hopefully make your resume a much more impactful one. Now, as you wrap up, uh, I would like to remind everyone to eat well, sleep well, and also to stay positive. And this has been Mark Wong for PSB Academy Student Affairs and Industry Engagement. I'll see you in the next episode. Take care. Take care.